previous lesson, we learned something about the eye, how the parts contribute to mechanism of seeing. And we heard that uh, before one can see, unless light falls on that object and they meet the eye, we went through all the processes of mechanism through which a person can see. Then I ended with what we call eye defect. There I explained to you that when we say eye defect, it's a malfunctioning of certain parts of the body. Sorry, certain parts of the eye as an organ which contribute to its inability to see either clearly or even not to see. Now pertaining to these eye effect defects, we have several of them and I mentioned to you that um, pertaining to the examples that we have pertaining to eye defects, we can mention short-sightedness as myopia, long-sightedness as hyperopia, we have astigmatism, presbyopia, glaucoma, cataract, and the rest. But um, in integrated science, you are expected to know basically the short-sightedness and long-sightedness. That is the myopia and hypermetropia, as well as sometimes astigmatism. But if you are into elective biology, you might be asked to go further to presbyopia, cataract, and glaucoma. So today, we are going to base our lesson on short-sightedness, long-sightedness, and astigmatism. Now let's look at these diagrams here. Let's assume that this is the eye. Then this one, too, we can see it as the eye. Then retina is found inside as the screen of the eye. Now we all know that before one can be able to see, unless light falls on that object, before the person can be able to see. Now let's say this is a near object. When we say a near object, meaning that object is very close to the eye. Then this, with this diagram, we can see that the object is far. So far object. Let's see. Here, with this place, where we have near object, we can see that um, light has fallen on the object and it is meeting the eye. It is passing through the cornea, the ichthyosumor, the pupil, the, then all the parts through the vitreous humor. But let's look at it. Instead of the light rays meeting on the retina, it is, it is meeting at the back of the retina, meaning there will be no image formed. Because it is not meeting on the retina, which is the screen of the eye, and it is meeting at the back of the retina, there will be no image formed. Let's look at this diagram too. Here we have a far object. Light rays have fallen on that far object. And it is coming to meet the eye. Let's see. If you look at the position of the retina, we can clearly say that the light rays, instead of meeting the retina, it has met in front of the retina, but not on the retina. Showing that here the person can see, here too the person can see, because on the retina is where we are going to locate the rods and the cones, which is going to convert the impulses or messages by the nerve cells there. Then it will be carried by the optic nerve straight to the brain for interpretation. But if you look at this place, the light rays are meeting before the retina, meaning not on the retina. And here to after the retina. So with these two diagrams, meaning the person cannot see. And with these two diagrams, they are the first two eye defects that we mentioned. We have the myopia and hypermetropia, or the short-sightedness and long-sightedness. Now let's see. Now, with this point, with this point, it is called long-sightedness. Now when we say long sightedness, it means that this eye can only see far objects. So when the object is near, the person cannot see. Why? Because the light rays that should meet on the retina is meeting at the back of the retina. And hence the person cannot see. 
That is why we call it long-sightedness. Long means far objects. Sighted, the person can only see long objects. That is why we are saying it is long-sightedness. So always a person suffering from long-sightedness, when the object is brought very near to the eye, the person cannot see. An example, if you are in a class and um, there are some students who are sometimes interested in sitting very close to the board. Why? Because maybe they can't see at far back or maybe they can't see at the front point. But a person suffering from long-sightedness, they don't usually sit in front of the board, but they prefer sitting at the back piece because when they are here, they can't see. Now, if you go to the hospital, we have um, certain eye um, specialists called the hypothalamus, and then we also have what we call. So we have the the those who are interested in reading this eye and those people. When you go there, we have a particular specialist there. They are going to normally they used to give lens to individual students. Now, when I mention lens, I mean a glass. When you go there, they give it to you. Not lens in, as we can see lens in the lab, but glasses are also referred to as lens. Now, if you go there and you visit these specialists, they will test and see whether you are suffering from long sightedness or among the rest. When they see you are suffering from long sightedness, they are going to give you, they are going to give you a lens. But then the lens that they are going to give you, it will be a convergent lens. It will be a convergent lens. Now, when you use this convergent lens by this eye, no matter how near the object is, it can be able to converge it for you to meet at this point. Only if you put this here, it is going to meet at this point, and hence the image can be formed. So that is how long sightedness it looks like. Now, let's come to the second one called short sightedness. Now, another short sightedness is the direct opposite of uh, long sightedness, meaning when the object is found closer, the person can see. But when the object is found afar off, the person can see. Why? Because when the object is found afar off, the light rays are extremely refracted, and hence it doesn't meet the retina, but it meets in front of the retina. And hence the image can't be formed on the retina. Good. Now I just want to, if you want to correct it, you need diverging lens. This is the shape of a diverging lens. When you bring in a diverging lens, it can be able to cause the light rays to diverge to meet on the retina like this. So here, image can be formed. So this is a convergent lens. And this is a divergent lens. So for long sightedness, you need converging lens. And for short sightedness, you need divergent lens. Good. So as I've already mentioned to you, practically when you are in a class, then you hear a person complaining that if you if maybe I sit in front of the class, I don't see. It means the person is suffering from long-sightedness. Then another person can also say that me, when I sit very far from the board, I can't see. Then the person is also suffering from short-sightedness. Now, apart from these two, we also have what we call the astigmatism. Now, when we say astigmatism, it is another eye defect where the lens which is found inside the eye. If you could remember, when we were drawing the eye, we said that within the eye, there is a lens inside. We mentioned that within the eye, there is a lens inside. Those suffering from astigmatism, the surface of the lens is very rough. 
and it's also a defect. Ideally, the surface of the lens shouldn't be rough. When it is rough, it's going to affect your vision. So those suffering from astigmatism, they have lens. The lens are functional. But the lens there is having a rough surface. And because of that, they can't see clearly. And it is also another eye defect. These people too, when they go to the hospital, we give them lens. But the lens that we give them is called cylindrical lens. The lens that we give them is cylindrical lens. A typical example is what I have here. Now if you observe this, the one that people use for life, it is an example of a cylindrical lens. But those ones that are having designs within it, sometimes you see a lens with a particular design, small boss under here, then a small boss under here. Those ones are either converging lens or diverging lens, pertaining to the use. But those without designs inside, if I have to sketch it, let me do like sketching something small for you to see. Let's say we have this to be the lens. With a cylindrical lens, there are no designs inside and they are used to correct astigmatism. But with a convergent and divergent, you will see that there will be some small boxes inside here, meaning they are used to correct either long sightedness or short sightedness. So, this is the basic difference between the divergent lens, converging lens, and also the cylindrical lens. Notice that all these lenses are used by those that had attended to the hospital and the eye specialist had been able to diagnose them and to see that at least these lenses are going to help them. So if you are into using lenses just like that, please advise yourself. Either you are forcing your lens which is found inside the eye to overwork because the actual work of the lens is to cause refraction so that you can see. So if you are introducing another lens, meaning you are forcing this to overwork, so you have to advise yourself. Thank you very much. This is the end of the eye effect.